So you've heard about scorecards and metrics within Power BI, and you've got your boss breathing down your neck. I need a scorecard. I need something to tell me what we're doing. But frankly, you haven't got the data for it. Or maybe you have, but you're not sure what to do with it. Or even, well, we've got all the, all the bells and whistles, but still building something that's going to track metrics, KPIs day by day, and actually put it in a way that's then there, ready to go, able to be commented upon, actually interacted with, drive your business forward. How do you do that? What's the best way to go about it? Hello, my name's Ross Waterston, the creator and founder of Geordie Consulting and Geordie Intelligence, the YouTube channel that you're watching today. What I thought we'd do today is actually have a look at really what goes into setting up metrics within Power BI. It's a, the feature metrics. It was called scorecards years ago. So you might still, when you're looking through Microsoft documentation or anything like that to go to that next level with this, scorecards, you might still find it under. So what does it do? What does it take? Now, the first thing I want to look at is we've come to the metrics area here. And if we just zoom in a bit and show you where we are, so it's this piece on the Power BI homepage. So if we go to Power BI home, here we go. Go down to metrics. You can see it shows me here are your metrics. Now I can choose to follow metrics is one of the things I can do as well and track a few things with this. But what is interesting here, we've got this piece along the top, which just shows me a selection of metrics that we've got. Now, these are the recommended ones and it's saying, well, I recommend these. Mm recommended AI stuff, yeah, you know, given it's okay for a given value of okay. The main thing is you can choose to follow metrics. This is the thing. So you can start to follow them. We've also got ones that can be assigned to me. So actually metrics can be assigned and they have an owner, which is one of the best things about these things. If you actually start talking about, we're going to do this in business, ownership is key. You assign metrics, assign them an owner, one of the things we can do if we come into this metric here. Zoom in, average hygiene. Let's pick the average hygiene of the Northeast. Okay, so we can see, I can check it in. So I can see everything that's going on. I can also check in to say, well, something's happened here. So include a note. This is a note because we're doing a video and save that. Okay, now that will all flow through into what is the new feature that we were talking about last week in terms of why is this such an underused thing that you now have a, vis a Power BI semantic model that you can connect to and extract the data and build report content other than having to use the scorecards alone. So you can suddenly actually pull these all out, put it together, put it into something, then what was the other thing you could do with Power BI now? Drop it straight into PowerPoint. So suddenly your deck goes from, I need to chase up this person to build this slide, put a screenshot in. No, Ross, you need to put your comments in by pick a date. Comments need to be in by this date. I'm not gonna go into this too much. So we've got this capability where we can actually start to see these goals. And what we've got here is we've, see, we've got goals and sub goals as well, which is one of the nice things. So you can actually start to build these together. All right, so we will go in and we'll have a look at this properly in a minute. But there's a couple of things I want to kind of just be really clear about and kind of gotcha -y or however you want to put it, put it. So one thing that we've got with this now, the England food hygiene data set, okay? This is kind of meant as, this is one of the things we see time and time again when we're working with clients, especially when they're first starting those journeys into Power BI and into, we want to be more data driven. And what they've got is they've got kind of like a point in time extract that says, well, this is what happened, this is it. Now, because of that, it makes it really difficult to do any trend analysis or anything like that. And these actually will allow you to do that because these are presenting a trend. But because these are presenting a trend, they're presenting that trend, but you've only got the final slice, as it were. Or so if we look at, say, East Midlands here, we've got this point here where they've corrected and removed 400 businesses between. So something's happened. OK, now. It's unlikely they've just gone and closed down 400 businesses. There's a lot that's unlikely. There's various trying to work these out. So something's happened and they've removed them. 
Now, it would be really difficult, or well, it's impossible for us to go back in the data and say, right, that who was removed, which businesses were closed. So this is a limitation of this functionality. But, okay, let's be honest here. If we just had slice, 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 and no trending, we wouldn't even know. Okay? So we're made aware of it, something's going on. In terms of what's happened, we've gone from in you know, two years ago, having 40,500. So we've, we have realistically increased by nearly a thousand businesses in an area, which is a lot, okay? A thousand food establishments is a lot. So we can kind of get to that point where we're going, all right, yeah, it's not terrible, but be aware, limitation, this is the reality of it. So how do we set these up? What do we actually do with them? So what I thought we'd do is first off, let's have a look and see, well, these are the existing ones. What options do we have with the existing ones? Because one of the things with this, and you'll see with an expert why we're doing it this way around. So we got, come to the scorecard, we say, all right, we're going to go to edit. And we've gone in edit now. We have the ability to hit edit, and we can now see what's going on. So this is a linked value, is what this is saying. So it's connected to data. So you can connect it to a report page. So you build it up, you go to your pages, you apply the filter levels on the pages, and you've then got, fundamentally, you've got a page that actually presents the data if you want it. You can do the same likewise for the final target. So if your targets are driven, so you could say, well, last year plus 5% or 10%, whatever it is you're looking to do, you can do. In this case, we just kind of hard-coded some values for it. It's not, there's no rhyme or reason gone into it. It's just we've picked a value. Now, again, because you've got a value and a, a current value and a target, what you can do is you can actually set a status. So we can set up rules for these. Okay, and if we come out of this one and we go to the ones that we've actually got the automated rules on, like the average hygiene. So if we come to Northeast average hygiene, oh, go to edit. Sorry, you can see we can update the rules. So in this case, we've got two rules. Very simple, very simplistic. If the value is greater than four point six, it's on track. If it's less or otherwise, it's at risk. So what we're saying really is that for an area, if the food hygiene is over a certain level, great, otherwise potentially it's at risk. And again, this is arbitrary, but we could decide what we had and we could work out what that means. And the impact of that, the net result is that we can see we've got one, two, three areas which are at risk. So the Northwest London and um, West Midlands. It makes it easier if you're tracking things like this. What you also have, with this, and again, there's so many things that you get within these. Um, if we go to see the details of it, okay, we can see the history. So we can see these are all the ones that are auto-generated. And again, it takes a snapshot every time the data set is refreshed at a minimum frequency of daily. So if you refresh it five or six times a day, it will take it from, my understanding is it's the latest one in the day. Um, in terms of actually looking at it and doing the deep dive and testing on it, I have not done enough. I'm looking at the documentation of it and we've seen it. And But seeing how it tracks, it's great. Um, and typically, as I say, I wouldn't put this on one, on metrics that go multiple times a day. We'd kind of go with the end of day metrics or something like that. So that's why I'm saying I haven't done enough. We can see the status rules. We can update those. And then we have this time period. So we can actually start to put in place a cycle for these. So for these, where it's the metrics, we haven't got a cycle. But we could say, actually, we want one. We want a cycle to date. We can pick what that is. So we could pick weekly. I don't know why you pick weekly. We could pick monthly, daily. But you can see, I mean, obviously, I mean, for our data set, I'd pick weekly. But you can pick what works in your data set. So it might be a case we want like a month to date. We want this, we want that. Put those together and it will start to track them. And it all helps because it just adds little bits and pieces to your data, little bits. It adds clarity to what's going on. Yeah, so cycle of date. MTD. Okay. Let's hit save. And you'll see what will happen now when we come save. Come out of there. And you see, here we go. So it will actually start to see that it's going to go through and it will expand the values through. Okay, so it's actually showing that monthly trend now. And it's updated that trend line to be month to date or to be the monthly values. It looks like it's going to the start of the month. 
Um, but the month to date it's telling us has gone up a bit. Experiment is what I would say with these to get these right. The, the options, they are there. They are not amazing, but they are not terrible either. And when you sit there and go, right, well, actually, what's going on with this? It's awesome. So what does it look like to create new? So if we go to here and we say, right, let's create a new scorecard. We're going to um, we're going to pick goal number one. Totals. I'm just going to call that totals because what I want to do here is go and create a new sub goal. Okay, and this is going to be businesses, and we're going to pick this one. And this is where we're going to pick from connector data, and we want to pick from our food hygiene. Okay, and it's going to bring in the report and we're going to pick this here because we just want the all businesses connect. So it's going to say 430. We're going to say we want 450,000 is our target. And we're going to say this is on track. Okay, we're just going to say this on track. We can put in a start date here. So when does this start? When does it when is it due? So in terms of when do we when do we want to get to that target value? So for you, it could be that could be our end of financial year. It could be all sorts of things. You can actually do this. So you can put in and track all your initiatives here. Okay. So we're going to save that. Okay. And then we can say, right, let's go to create a new submetric as well. Newcastle Park Runners. Connect that to data, Newcastle Park runs. Okay, so we're not tied. You can see here we aren't tied to a single data set either. Okay, we can pick here. So we can say, right, let's connect to this. So we can start to put together a complicated and quite rich scorecard across our business, can't we? So we could say, right, this is going to get to 400,000. But right, and I put yeah, four hundred thousand. Okay, and we could put in some. We could put in all the ones that we wanted with this. What you've got here, and the reason why I wanted to didn't do it this way is what I wanted to show you was when we come to edit here, we've got use sub goals. So we can put what's the sum of the sub goals, and we know that the total that we want to get to here is say eight hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. We'll put this as on track, okay? And we can see we've got a number that's been assigned to it because it summed those up. We could average it, you could do all sorts. So you can actually build these things up to use based on what's going on. So there's there's a lot that you can do here. If you think these are completely disparate data sets that just do not tally up, we can bring it all together and total it in here. And actually suddenly we've got something that we didn't have before. Again, this can connect to a data set and have it. So we've got these, these look great. Okay? The challenge and the problem and the bit that most people struggle with when they first look at these, okay, if we now save this. The reading view, okay, is great, I've got this. Uh, there's not really a lot here, is there? I don't understand. And this is kind of the bit people go, oh, I don't understand. It just, it just does not look good that you've just got one thing and, okay. Um, what do I do is kind of where people stand and it becomes a problem for people to go take that next step. But the reality is that the way this runs and the way this will work is it over time, the value increases. And that's the bit you have to understand that it takes time and the value will increase. So what do you reckon then? The way metrics and scorecards work is that they give you that point in time trend. Okay, so you, for where you have a limited data set, it's useful. Okay, as I say, even if you have a full data warehouse, you could still find these metrics useful. The challenge is, is that they have to start and then they increment and grow. You can get around that now with the data being available in a data model. So you could actually augment that data model in a, in a new data model. You potentially don't want to edit that one bring in historic values and the current ones from there and actually produce data sets and do stuff with that. 
as I say, being able to pull comments through as well from that semantic model and place those into a PowerPoint directly to then have it automatically ready, ready available. Your monthly deck becomes just completely automatic nowadays. I don't have to do anything anymore. It's just bush, done. This is where metrics and scorecards just change how your business works. We discussed a little bit, didn't we, around that you've got that comment in. Now, one of the other things you can do, and it isn't, it's really difficult to kind of demonstrate on here without, you know, showing this. But you can interact, and because you can bring your scorecards through into Teams, you can then make it really easy for your team to actually start to interact and ask questions about it. Well, hang on, what's going on with that? What's going on with that? What we've done as well is we've put this into a Power App, um, and I might look and see if there's a way we can package that and put it up on our website as well, on Geordie Consulting's website to download, or it'll be on GitHub probably, you can't remember. Um, but it's there's so much stuff you can do with this and feed it in and drive your business further forward. It's just there's, like the sky is the limit. So I'd love to hear from you down below what you've done, how you've extended it, what you've put in place for it. And also it's getting to that point, isn't it? I'm standing with it, that day one, it just looks terrible because well, I've just got a dot in the middle. What's the point of that? It's when you get further, when you put in the automated status rules that it starts to drive it further forward. Even if you say we're going to be manual, but we're going to say like, the owner is going to have to go and update it every month, every whatever, you can do it. We can write rules to pick out when was the last time it was updated. Who's not updated in a month? Name and shame them. You know, which ones have you not updated, Ross? Oh, okay. These are things you can drive in and it just changes the way your business works. So if you like that and you think we really need some help and support in getting this embed embedded into our business, get in touch. Geordie Consulting are there to help you. Book a meeting using the link down below. For now, though, stay safe. Take care. Ta-da.